Okay, let's go. Hello and a warm welcome to everyone here on site at the Telesaloniki International Film Festival at the Agora, uh, but also to everybody who is here online. Uh, nice to see you and uh, to be part for this uh, very specific session, uh, the launch, the kickoff uh, of a series of uh, think tanks to think about the future of uh, film markets and actually go beyond thinking and see what we could possibly do for a better future of the film markets. So we are here um, together in the studio with Elise and uh, uh, Angeliki. Um, no need to tell you that Elise, sorry, I should say the full name, Elise Jalado is the general director and uh, Angeliki Vergu is the head of Agora, both of the Telesanoliki International Film Festival, and they are the initiators of the project. And I'm going to um, ask them a couple of questions in a couple of minutes. But let me first of all welcome you and tell you what is it all about. Basically, the future of film markets have been a, a, a source of questioning in the last two years after everything which uh, has been happening. And I, not, I would not only say questions, but also maybe worries or curiosity. What's going, uh, going to happen? It, uh, is it a topic which has been already discussed a couple of times in different film festivals already, thinking of Docs Barcelona, who was hosting um, a panel called Film Markets of the coming present, but also discussing uh, the future. But other sessions have been seen all around the circuit of the film market. So this is a question which is actually really, um, um, yes, actual. And the idea is to give a little bit more attention to this key question uh, by not only having a punctual format somewhere in one or another country, but to coordinate this a little bit, to give it more attention, to give it more substance, and go into a, what we call a, a serial discussion, so to speak. So this is what we are opening today, to be able to bring this to life, uh, discuss ideas, and uh, possibly see what we can actually execute in the future of film markets coming up around the globe. So, Elise and Angeliki, I want to uh, ask you a little bit more about what's happening. I want to say also this is a collaborative um, uh, approach we have here because we have also specific guests here we, who are online with us. We have uh, Martina Bleis, sorry, from the Berlin International uh, Film Festival, head of the co-production market. Hi, Martina. Oh, okay. Well, we, we have fans here. This is great. We have uh, Pascal Dio, the head of the production bridge of the Venice International Film Festival. Yes, wonderful. We have uh, Inke van Loek of the EFFR in Rotterdam, uh, the pro section. We have uh, Marcello Paiolillo, a project manager of the Locarno Pro. Yes, the one with the leopards. Sayoya Riba, head of industry, San Sebastian Film Festival, where I was a month ago. Hey. <laughs> Hugo Rochak, head of the film industry office at the Carlo Vivari International Film Festival. And Adeline Chauveau, exotic, because Adeline Chauveau of Europe International is the only one who is not a film market, but it is also the will to reflect um, the, the thinking, the integration, the input also of um, um, well, film experts and professionals who are actually completely part of this ecosystem. So Adeline of Europe International, bringing the sales agent perspective. Thank you to be with us today. And you have to know this is only the first kickoff, but of course we have um, invited more guests for the future uh, think sessions uh, uh, coming up, the uh, think tanks, sorry, uh, coming up uh, to reflect the voice of key, key players of the ecosystem, and it will be producers, promotion, distributors, and etc. So this is coming up also with us. And uh, maybe a short question in the audience here today. Who is a producer? Yeah, well, okay, still one. Who is a distributor? A, a film director? Oh, yeah, a couple, two, three, yes. Sales agent? No. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Give me just one or two functions you have so that I know who is in the audience, please. German films? German films? Yes. I'm a programmer. Programmer. Film festivals, independent, very good. Okay, great. So this is great. We have already a little bit more representation. So I think uh, this is time for us now to dig into this. So yes, tell us maybe and uh, to the audience online or uh, offline, how did this idea really come to life from your perspective as the initiators of this? 
thank you, Essie, for uh, guiding us uh, through this path. Yes. First, uh, <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we are all professional from the film industry. We all come from production, distribution, sales, and from markets. Um, and uh, we know the industry, we know the history of film markets. Uh, the first few markets, which were for uh, buying and selling, and then the revolution introduced by Rotterdam in the 80s. Um, the film markets became uh, something else, became a hub, became a place to pre-sell, uh, became a place also uh, to train, uh, to network. And uh, so we, and, and also this model has spread uh, all over the world. And um, we have adapted it, uh, each film markets to each uh, region, to the needs of uh, each industry. We have been in permanent uh, relation to our industry, but also all together between film markets to try to be as com complementary as possible. We have implemented uh, a lot of uh, new activities, new trainings, we became more sustainable, more inclusive, more inclusive, sorry, uh, more accessible, and uh, we even went through contradictory injunction, injunctions sometimes to become bigger and more sustainable. So all this, we, we, we know uh, where we come from, what we have been done, doing uh, so far. Since two years, of course, we even uh, went through new uh, ways of organizing the film markets. We went online. Uh, we had a remote um, a relations with our colleagues. We, we went through many dialogues with our colleagues uh, from uh, different film markets. But uh, everything has shifted. The change are accelerating so fast, not only in the film markets, but because the film markets are only the reflection, the, the mirror of the industry. So the, the industry is changing so fast that we don't want to run after the industry. We want to anticipate and we want to slow down, work together, be more systematic in the way we approach the uh, the problems, and uh, and um, and yeah, work together because it's it's we are all together in this industry. We belong to the same ecosystem, and we think that being all together and and uh, tackling each problem, one after the other, um, mm -hmm. will help us to redefine our identity as film markets, which will be different identities according to the territories, to the size of the festivals, of course, but try to, um, yeah, to think, to take the time to think. We have a lot of questions, and most of the time we don't have the solutions, because so maybe we can find solutions together. Exactly, because there is no time to think very often. I know the, the craze of preparing all these festivals and the, I know who it is because I'm attending most of them. So uh, Angeliki, maybe tell us a little bit more because also uh, uh, people are asking themselves to which markets are they going to go to which session because it is it is about money also. So like w what's happening? What, are, what is the key question that people are asking themselves? Well, uh, I think they're asking uh, if it will, uh, if it's worth my time to attend the festival or mm -hmm. and the market uh, and each one of them. So many of them for monetary reasons and the rise of traveling costs or for sustainability reasons, mm -hmm. uh, they are getting more picky uh, about where to go, where to have booths, where which co-production markets to attend. Uh, and the, the hybrid format can be useful on um, on this perspective, it's more inclusive. Someone can join online if they want to, uh, and if they like it. Some mm -hmm. of them don't like it, um, but uh, it's it puts a pressure on markets like like ours or smaller markets to be able to offer to the industry professionals yes. uh, a meaningful and. Uh, and uh, the projects to be uh, on a high level, to uh, have uh, networking possibilities, and for them to make their time worth their while. 
basically. Yes, absolutely. I'm thinking also the different forms that we have, the booths, the exhibition floors. Is it still accurate? Is it what the, what the people want to have? The, the form we do networking, the form we connect, we exchange the ideas. Is it still the, 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 the right thing to do? Thinking also about the next generation coming. They are young, they are tech savvy, they are totally diverse, they are into green production, they want it to make it happen. And um, uh, are they also uh, addressed? So this is certainly something that uh, uh, we want also to, to explore. But talking about the um, hybrid alternative you were just mentioning, uh, uh, Angeliki, um, um, I wanted also to know, like, um, bec because I, I was reading in The Hollywood Reporter, I quote, everyone is looking at their expenses and their revenues and make the calculation on whether a physical film market makes sense uh, uh, to them, for them. And the big and innocent question is, what is the future of film markets overall? So, um, because it, it is very expensive also for the hybrid thing, right? Is it double the cost? The cost uh, is definitely double. Uh, in order to make something that is of good quality, like here, I hope, right yeah. now. Yeah, and uh, I'm looking at our guests also online, like, is it double the cost? Film markets, yes, you are, I, I see Inca definitely saying yes. And the others, yes, no, no. It, is it double the stress? <laughs> is it double the stress? It is double the stress, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, good, yes. And um, um, you, Elise, do you, how do you see this uh, pressure also like uh, on, the, on, the, on the film markets, on the, um, to, to make it happen in hybrid and online? I mean, did you see a, an evolution this? Because I mean, my point of view on this is like, I saw everything online. I've been alone in studios with AI-guided cameras to make it happen with no audience at all, and no one, not even, not even a guest, right? And then I come back, and everywhere I've been going in the last um, uh, months, it's like everybody's in real life, like hybrid. Oh, we're not sure, you know? So d did you have no, also this pressure? It's true that this year uh, everyone is coming back, uh, though we still need to be online because we always have people who cannot travel, who cannot make it, who mm -hmm. and also because people are scaling down their um, the team who is traveling. Well, we I mean usually to Thessaloniki we don't have the whole company coming from uh, Hollywood, uh, 30 people. I mean th we are not this kind of market, and I think that the bigger bigger market has uh, different problem that, than we have and in a way smaller markets maybe um, since we are we are not boutique uh, market we are bigger than a boutique market but we are like a it's easy to 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 network and and um, and people you know the companies are coming one person so and it's it's so it's I have to say that uh, we notice that everyone is coming back uh, in and real we, life. Do, we don't have yeah. So many booths. I mean, yeah. we, we are not uh, Venice, uh, Cannes, Berlin. But that's the good thing so in this project, that uh, it is really a collaborative approach here where we have different sizes of different markets and also like uh, different experts coming in. So this is really interesting. And this is also why we um, uh, plan together. I mean, I'm, I'm, by the way, I forgot to present myself. I'm AC Coppens. I'm, I'm uh, the founder of The Catalyst. And uh, we are the agency working at the crossing of um, digital media and creative content. We do a lot in the audiovisual industry, obviously in film, but also in music and sound and etc. So we have a little bit more meta approach, and uh, we have been collaborating together to to to, to start uh, uh, this project. So this is why, in the reflection, and we will see it a little bit later in the presentation, that we decided to go on in like the shape of the market themselves, but also to take like the themes which are relevant to the industry, and also to think like how can we serve these in possibly new sessions, formats, way to, to connect, so to speak. So let us, uh, to finish this uh, little introduction, let us maybe go to these main topics which are relevant to the industry. Um, what's happening? What, I mean, we, we have this cinema attendance which is lagging behind the pre-pandemic uh, things. Of course, there are a couple of uh, US blockbusters coming up, but what about uh, European uh, independent cinema? The distributors are struggling, right? Yeah. Elise, what's your point of view on this? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we are, we have ex uh, cinemas also in Thessaloniki, so we see that uh, there is a concentration 
for the audience on very few films, not only Americans, by the way. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's just a concentration and uh, on very few films. Uh, of course, the overall uh, audience is going down also. So how, as a market, because we are not going to solve the, the problem, uh, all the problems of the industry, but how, as a market, can we continue to um, to serve, to find solutions, to invent tools uh, for uh, European films to travel? To um, because it's it's all about that. Also, diversity of uh, of cinema and um, and and uh, mm -hmm. traveling of of European films. Mm -hmm. Not only, I mean, I, depending on the markets also, but uh, for us, it's it's that how to continue to um, to be useful for the distributors, for the exhibitors, and for producers to uh, to attend the, the the audience. Which films are we going to support? Should we support uh, so many projects that don't meet the audience? Mm -hmm. Or should we be uh, more uh, selective, have less projects? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's questions that we, we, we have every day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's a big <laughs> question. So many also questions like that I put projects, on the table. Commercial Sorry. projects, which audiences, and etc. Angeliki, is this reflection on audiences? Is this something which is also specific to the Central and Eastern Europe? Uh, which are sometimes not completely uh, represented in the in the Western countries, or not the way you would maybe love to. I mean, like, how is it? Is it something a question which is also specific to your region? Yes. Well, uh, markets such as ours or more regional markets are basically trying to support the the local and uh, regional uh, countries which are usually of a low audiovisual capacity, mm -hmm. and there is a need for diversity. Uh, of course, uh, but there is there there needs to be also um, support for these films. Mm -hmm. So and also in distribution, and I think this is where uh, at, at least until now the um, uh, the national film centers were playing a big role. So some are doing better than others to promote their local um, films, films. Mm -hmm. in festivals or with sales agents and. Um, yeah, uh, and promoting them basically. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that in Western uh, markets there are not so many, but this is kind of our job as well to of to support and bring forward and spotlight these films. Of course, thinking of this like uh, the local is a new global, right? I'm not going to say the N uh, uh, world with uh, Netflix, <laughs> but I'm going to say it, but Netflix and co are, are absolutely promoting this uh, uh, this uh, uh, ansatz, uh, as we would say in, in, in Germany. So talking about the streamers, I mean, are they detecting new rules? Is it something that we need to consider in the film markets also? Elise, what's your take on well, it? It's a question that we had since uh, many years, and I think that all the film markets have the same uh, questions. Um, it's true that there is a need for more content because they are consuming. Consuming. This is the the, the word. Um, they, they they are. There is a this um, anger for um, for uh, new contents. Mm -hmm. uh, so and there is a shift also in the industry because most of the producers attending our market are have one foot in production of films and another foot in production of series now so how to accompany them in this um, in this uh, new uh, journey that they are uh, starting so we want to to go uh, into um, digital uh, content, how far should we go? Mm -hmm. uh, if we go in this direction, we have to make sure that we keep um, we keep supporting cinema because we are also coming. I mean, this is the the core of our activity. So, how far should we go? Should we do it? How far should we go? And um, and so there there is a, a yeah the, this thirst of content for the from the platform, and mm -hmm. on the other hand, the audience, uh, the, we say that we, we have too many films for the theaters. So there is an overproduction for theaters, that's what we hear from distributors, from exhibitors. So how to find a balance? Um, should we reduce on one hand and uh, develop on the other, on the other side? Uh, it's, 
we need to find a balance. We need to think about it. And it's not an easy decision because, um, because it's new and we have to take care of it with care. Yeah, well, I hear sometimes um, too many productions, too, too, too many films, and on the other hand, I, I hear not enough content. So I'm like, well, make up your mind, you know, like, <laughs> what, what do we have? But um, thinking uh, more about the, the pressure that uh, there is on the traditional release window, which is, I think, not only in France, I mean, uh, I don't know if the French colleagues would say something about this, but... Um, there has been this push to go directly uh, uh, on demand. So this is also impacting the uh, business models coming coming now, right? Uh, yes. And, uh, well, I, I think that the French are more at uh, stake uh, than mm. uh, any other um, country because it's, I mean, the, the production scheme of uh, the whole French production scheme belongs on to, I mean, mm. relies on this uh, on these rules. Uh, in Greece, it has been a bit chaotic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as, a, as a theater, uh, we, we have the theaters, so we see the films online, then on, in, it's, it's a bit chaotic. It's, yeah, so it, it needs to be. <laughs> but I think it's not only in but France, it is a bit chaotic. And I think that, that, that. I don't know if, as a market, we are going to solve this issue. <laughs> no, 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 of course. But I, I think it's, it's worth discussing. Um, thinking about um, uh, streamers and the technology stuff they have been bringing into the game, I mean, technology is uh, impacting uh, the way. Uh, film are produced, but also films are, are distributed. Uh, you know, like the metaverse is coming up, and etc. Like, what what will it make with with the film industry, and etc. Uh, so some markets are really on it. I'm thinking of the uh, colleagues of uh, uh, Can Next, uh, for example, with uh, my colleague uh, Stan, uh, where I moderate with him at Can Next and uh, the Marché du Film. Obviously, they, they are quite edgy on the uh, technological uh, approaches also. So um, I think that uh, quite a few markets are giving the opportunity to explore these tech tools and see like uh, how they work and etc. Um, but I think it will be also very interesting to see like uh, how relevant technology is for your attendees. I mean, I, I don't know if this is something that uh, uh, markets uh, need to explore more. Yeah, yeah, and what will remain at the end? Uh, ah, we have okay. blockchain, we have yeah. metaverse, uh, we have uh, digital production, what we're... Yeah, VR, we have, um, uh, it, it has to do with the, the way that we are going to organize the markets, but also the way that um, the, uh, the whole industry will embrace these new technologies. And, um, and we still don't know. So, mm. shall yeah, it's just like the, uh, the, pl the platforms and the series and the digital production. How far should we go? Mm. Um, so uh, we had a presentation about uh, digital production. We have a blockchain presentation. But, uh, I mean, how to embrace it as um, a market also? Mm. Um, this is a question. Yeah. Do, I, I'm not sure if it is... Um, is it on the 10th of November that you have this session also like Metaverse saving the world or spoiling the world? Can it be? I can't, I can't remember. I saw so many programs. I can't yeah. remember. But I saw this somewhere like, oh, what about the Metaverse? Is no, it it's somewhere else. Is it somewhere else? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Too many markets in my head. But um, it, it's a legit question. Like, what is it? And, and, and then it leads me to the last aspect I wanted to discuss with you. Sustainability. But sustainability, not only ecological sustainability, but also social sustainability beyond the economical sustainability, which is, I mean, we're talking about markets, right? We're talking about business and money. So, of course, we, we need to talk about uh, economical sustainability, but also ecological and social to make it uh, complete. Um, I think that uh, the colleagues of the, of the EFM, for example, are really pushing the agenda also with wellness and health on top of it. I mean, uh, we saw that in the programs in the last years. So, um, why is it important to, to, to have this in the market? Do we need to, talk, to, to take it more transversally, so to speak, to make it more complete? Angeliki. Well, okay, I think that uh, every market that is relevant right now, they have uh, accepted the challenge of uh, ecological sustainability with uh, practical tools and a lot of imagination sometimes. Uh, and uh, yes, of course, like that leads, of course, to social sustainability and uh, diversity, and uh, so it 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 needs to start from the market. If if you have a market that promotes new talents, uh, emerging directors, uh, new ideas, uh, 
I would say that it needs to start from the training programs, to tell you the truth, then to the market, yeah. then to have feedback yeah. and continue. Yeah. So it needs to be systematic and it needs to happen uh, for the film production, from, from the script to film production, to distribution, and of course to film events like festivals and markets. Absolutely. I can say, as a moderator myself, uh, I, I can say, I, I mean, I'm also a curator, but I, we don't want to have this, you know, like the table at the end of the day about diversity, where you have the diversity, like on one table at five o'clock in the afternoon, you know. <laughs> you don't want this anymore, that they talk about diversity and everybody's happy and they have a good conscience about that. Oh, we, we did it. You know, but just like just be diverse, you know. So I think that's uh, something which is definitely uh, uh, coming up everywhere. So okay, well, thank you for this first exploration. Where does it come from? Which topics uh, did you have in your mind to to be shared here? So what I would like to do now is um, actually share with you the a short presentation on um, the way we have. I mean, it, it, to be very honest, it's a draft. Okay, Th and that's why you are here today, so that we can take your input. It's a draft to tell you. So what what we had in mind. So. Goals are uh, obviously very clear. It is about to, to discuss these uh, topics of uh, concern and the, the challenges in order to make the markets more worth the time, as you were saying, worth the money also um, for the attendees and attractive to your professional audiences. Um, the think tanks want to offer a place of trust somehow so that w we can exchange about uh, what's coming up for the film market, so a place of uh, mutual and collective support also. So it's not about, uh, you know, like one film market discussing and being on top of things, but to make it together. Uh, so it will be a complementary process, a cooperative process, and it will be for, um, and it is for European film markets from um, all ranges, from small uh, up to the biggest, uh, as they are your partners in this um, uh, project. And it is all about, are we going for the same, or are we going for something different? And as we know that change is important, probably we're not going to go for the same. Otherwise, we, we, otherwise let's have coffee. And then, you know. So okay. So the goals are clear. Um, in terms of um, timeline, so um, this is the launch, uh, obviously today, to, to discuss the first thing and get your input. The second one will be at the EFM in February. Um, it will be about shaping new business standards. I'm going to go back to this in, in a second. The second think tank will be about technology and audiences. It will be back here in Thessaloniki in March. The third think tank will be about green, social, healthy sustainability in April. And I think we will have to check. Probably we will do it online so that it's more sustainable. I think uh, the medium is the message, right? Um, and then we will have the results presentation at the Marché du Film in Cannes in May 23. Talking about the format as such, and um, we, we plan every time three groups of work. Two groups will be dedicated to a specific theme, a content thing, like streamers, technology, whatever that is. And one group will be completely dedicated for the, the shape of the film markets themselves. So we have three theme tanks, and everyone will have two groups of content and how to process this content for the attendees of the film markets, and one group about film markets as such in their form, obviously also for the attendees and for the film markets. So let me dig a little bit more into the details. Um, on the first think tank, shaping new business standards, it's going to be all about business, obviously. So we're going to see, like, as we were uh, having this discussion just before uh, with you, um, what are the new standards? What are the new business processes, business models? Which impact does it have on the industry and the European film industry and also the film markets? We will explore also the specific, uh, with a specific focus on streaming, how to work with streamers, and how will it impact also the film markets. Thinking of certain film festivals not inviting the streamers, so to speak, in their, in their competition, and others having them. Some having them in their conferences part, or having them exhibiting or something. So how do we work with this? How do we navigate this? 
And the film market group will be really in the bigger question of the business, like the shape of the film markets themselves, the exhibition floors. Do we have an exhibition floors? Do we have a, a metaverse, maybe? Well, OK. Um, industry sessions, online, offline, like uh, the bigger question of the big shape of the film markets themselves. On the second think tank, technology and audiences, obviously it will be all about that. So it will be the way technology is impacting films are produced and distributed, which tools should be considered for producers and distributors um, as a whole uh, in the ecosystem, and how do, that m how do we make that accessible in a film market? So that it is worth it, and not only like, oh yeah, well that's a session I go and I don't care. Do we want them to use it? Do they want to use it? What don't they use it? What is in the way this is going to be a, a big focus and also the audience behavior also um, has been changing in the, uh, in a lot in the last few years, no need to tell you. So it will be about the new ways of distributing. And possibly we will explore also what tech is bringing uh, 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 there. But also it will be like, how can we make sure that independent European cinema films can be also made accessible and seen by the audience? And then the film market group will be with a focus on hybrid and online. And possibly, again, sorry, metaverse, but like really dedicated on the um, technology uh, uh, part of the discussion. And last but not least, the green social and healthy sustainability with the two substantial, substantial groups uh, on uh, the systematic approach, the standardization for green solutions in the audiovisual uh, system, so green, green, green. Another one, even if it is like, it's a little bit like intersectionality, right? It's not that we want to divide it, but we have to make groups which make sense. So green for sure, what is happening all around, uh, all around Europe, which country do what, etc. And also diversity, inclusiveness, representation and health, um, how to, um, um, have, uh, to share visionary best practices in film markets. And the last uh, uh, group will be, again, the film market group. And this is what I wanted to say. It's not something we will discuss, but how are film markets as such healthy, green, diverse, make sure that it is a transversal and a deep uh, um, uh, implementation of this, so to speak. So that's it for the presentation. We can go back to uh, everyone. I think uh, we talked enough, right? So we can uh, really open up uh, the discussion now. So see this, please, as a draft, right? Um, as I was discussing this with my team and we were exchanging, we were totally aware, you know, it's, it is a proposition. We still have the time to reshape some of the format. And if, if you have the impression that something is definitely missing, uh, then please uh, uh, come in touch. So you have the opportunity to talk with us today. I'm going to open the floor specifically, of course, uh, uh, with uh, our uh, film market partners um, and, uh, well, Europe was international also uh, with us today, but also for with you today, so in case uh, you want to say something. And a second thing I need to tell you, do we have a QR code uh, for uh, the survey? We have a little survey so that we can uh, know where do you come from, uh, knowing like who are you, which film markets are you attending every Every year, um, who, what, which formats are really interesting for you, so that you can say, I love the pitches, I love the co-production market, I only go to the networking event and have a drink. Um, <laughs> uh, but also, themes like, uh, do you do you like to speak about uh, business models or technology or whatever? So tell us all of this, please. And then at the end, we give even you the opportunity to tell us what is the key question you would love to have discussed at the film market, so that's good for the film markets. But also, what is the key question, maybe we, we, we will refer to it, that you want to discuss here in the think tanks, right? So if we can uh, show briefly the QR code for everyone, we would uh, uh, highly appreciate if you would take, I mean, it's really like five questions, it would take you five minutes. So I know that nobody is doing surveys otherwise. So um, can we send uh, the QR code uh, in our, on our screens here? Let me check it. Yes. Wonderful. Here we go. It works. So everybody, 
here on site, you have this possibility, this possibility, this possibility to uh, uh, scan the code. And for you online, obviously, it's uh, right there on your screen, super easy. I think you had the time to do it. Even you can stop the video because it is a recorded session. So I think we can proceed. Everybody has it here? OK, so I think we can uh, proceed and go back to our guests. And um, yes, so um, maybe um, to make it a little bit easier, I think uh, we can go straight to the um, program and uh, think together with our guests here. Uh, what do you think about this uh, shaping with different um, uh, formats? Can I uh, see the guests again, please? That would be great to come back to them on, on screen. I want to make sure, oh, you're still there. This is great. <laughs> OK, so I would love to hear uh, your input. Uh, Pascal, yes, please, go on. Yes, just to start. Uh, no, I agree with uh, all the different uh, uh, goals, uh, question, and everything that you have been uh, tackling uh, in this. The only thing, perhaps, which would be good also between all ourselves, if I could say so, would be perhaps also to think about the, the financing of a film market. True. Very uh, good point, absolutely. <laughs> I see everyone <laughs> saying this. Uh, because I think it's it's also a new challenge because uh, public fundings are decreasing and so on and so on. So, and indeed, uh, as soon as you are going on an hybrid uh, solution, suddenly the refips are totally different and the revenues are totally different from uh, an on-site and in-person market, of course. So I think it could be perhaps uh, another way that uh, that we could add in this uh, think tank uh, series. Excellent. Which could be perhaps helpful to to exchange everything. Yes, thank you very much. That's a very good point. Uh, for me, it was something that would have been, um, I, I would say, by force discussed in the first uh, think tank on business models in the third group for the film markets when we were talking about the force because of course this aspect would have been coming but i think it's a very good idea to put it more to the front um it's very interesting because we are doing right now a, um, a project for the um, financing and business models of um, digital arts organization throughout Europe, and it is a very similar problem. It is exactly the same with the public funding and like, how do we public-private partnerships? How do we mm. enter new business models? So th that's a very good point. Thank you so much. That's really valuable. Thanks. You're welcome. You're yes. Welcome. Uh, Sawia, are you uh, with a... No? You are on top Sorry? of my list here. So if you want to say something, please. <laughs> no, no, I was just thinking that the, the program was really well um, drawn. Um, the only thing is for us, I already um, answered the survey, um, I am more into the physical format of market mm -hmm. with, um, let's say, a leg in the, in the online. So for us, it's not really doubled the, the price or how, how do you say the cost of it. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it would be interesting to see for other markets who do the same, um, how yes. to, to monitor the different um, attendance of, of the events when it's online, because it's something uh, for me at this point was a bit difficult because it's not the same as a, as a physical uh, format. But no, just, just wanted to say that because we used our uh, tools that we already had to, to do all the, the online thing. Um, in particular, in 2020, we had everything online. I remember. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I, I think I moderated from Luxembourg. I was in Luxembourg. On the day. <laughs> um, I think no one was in San Sebastian, really. No, no, I'm, I'm joking. But yeah. um, it's, it's the, only, the only time we've done everything only online. But what, what we do for us, it's a physical event with some online inputs to, to give access to people uh, not able to attend San Sebastian. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. So let me ask you a question to uh, all of you in, in the markets. Would it be... Mm, would it be better? You remember uh, we suggested in Think Tank 1, business model generally and shape of the formats. Think Tank 2 for the film markets, hybrid uh, uh, versus online versus in real life only. Would it make sense to say the hybrid question is just one part of the shape and then make a full think tank on funding. 
Would that make more sense to you? So that we, have, we would have in the first think tank, not all the shapes and et cetera, but really the funding, and we push the formats and et cetera, and the hybrid part in the second think tank. Would it be better? Does it make sense? OK. Um, I do Ma think so, yes. Yes, thank you. That's, that, that's great. Um, Marcello? I have you muted, or we can't hear you. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, I, I agree with this. I agree with the, uh, Pascal's suggestion. So that's definitely uh, a priority. At the same time, I think that it's um, it would be pretty beneficial also to ask ourselves. Uh, I, I know it's a very wide question, but what really a film market is? And I think, uh, you know, partially um, Elise. Uh, touch on this when she uh, made a brief history of film markets, but it's true that we use that term and we actually use also plenty of other terms. You know, for example, we call it Locarno Pro, in Venice they call it Film Bridge, you call it Agora. So, but at the same time, I mean, it's clear to me that there are very different types of market and especially there are two kinds of market. One that is the the main ones that are, uh, you know, the typical film markets that have a structure like a, like a fair and more commercial, like it could be EFM, Cannes, AFM, uh, probably Toronto too, that have a, a, a definitely more clear market structure. They have, a, you know, a clear commercial component with stands purchased by a sales agent uh, to showcase those of films that are not in the festival. And these types of markets, I think that the one that need and are changing the most, of course, because what also you were touching base before, the fact that uh, buyers are becoming more picky, there is less people uh, traveling or for less days or they, they you know, the, 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 the hybrid um, uh, option also, uh, of course, uh, is, is another issue that, that, that uh, has a lot to do with these kind of markets. But then there are also di uh, different kind of markets, like Locarno Pro is in a way, and there are many others, probably Tallinn, probably also San Sebastian, and many others, in which, uh, you know, I can talk specifically on Locarno Pro, but we, we consider ourselves more like a networking event where, where industry people, of course, people come and do also business there, but they come mostly there to develop long-standing relationship, to to you know, get to meet with fellow peers and discover new talents, especially the discovery of new talents, of course, is has a big part to a festival like Locarno that has always champion, you know, discovery and uh, new European talents, and independent. And uh, and so uh, this is why we develop a lot of specific program, like the two that I run, which are Step In and U30, but also Match Me, Open Doors, uh, the Industry Academies, Alliance for Development, all of these different programs are there to so that uh, to allow people to discuss about the future of cinema the future of our industry pretty much like we're doing right now and so on and so i think there are really different kind of markets that we should consider and uh, and to see where we're going in as an industry so there are specific questions of course that we should ask ourselves where buyers are going are the same are the number of buyers still the same the same can be said also for sales agents, of course. I think every festival saw that in the last few years there's been more and more producers coming in and less sales agents and definitely less buyers. And also the work of sales agents is, is, has been changing a lot. They're becoming more and more also financiers and producers themselves. So, I mean, there are a lot of things that needs to be tackled. And I understand that the financing the markets for probably is, a, is one of the key questions. But at the same time, I think when we discuss about you know business model and everything, we should also start asking ourselves, what do we mean for a film market and what do we think it should be a film market? Because right now it, it comprises so many different things. Excellent. Thank you very much. I think that's uh, what is also behind the world of complementary, that there is also a sort of a meta ecosystem with the film markets and their different roles. I think that's what you meant also, Elise, earlier. I see that uh, uh, Hugo has a question. Yes? Yes, uh, not the question, but maybe a comment on top of this, because I, I also think uh, as a big supporter of the design thinking methodology, so I also think it will be very important to 
to try and understand what are the needs of the different stakeholders. And it would be helpful if we could get some survey in place beforehand, maybe talk to the different stakeholder groups and get the full understanding of what it is that is actually changing for them. Because I think, uh, you know, with any market that's changing, we need to kind of understand what people are expecting when they plan to trade differently. And, uh, you know, we once had an old market like Agora style, and now we have supermarkets and uh, hypermarkets where people are going and uh, and essentially people are still trading, right? I mean, people are still uh, coming to a market. So I think we need to look at it uh, in this uh, simple way and uh, try and understand how can we best uh, help uh, uh, the to meet these expectations or needs. Mm -hmm. And if I may say so, the expectations will not be the same uh, for a buyer f going to Venice or Cannes and going to Locarno or Rotterdam. So it's true that we need to know who we are and, uh, and then <laughs> adjust to uh, yeah, each uh, size, each, uh, each activity, each um, yeah, shape. Yeah. So the, the little survey we have for now is a very simple one. Um, still, I think it is still possible to check uh, which roles are answering what, so we can actually cluster a little bit. And I, w I just want to say that the quality of the results can only be the quality of the input. So I can only encourage you to really fill it nicely and to really like, write down what your questions are. And I think we would actually have already, if we have a good participation, would it only be up to, up to 50? I think it would be already like uh, quite good to get uh, a good idea. And uh, we, we, we have already a couple of answers, uh, which uh, we have been analyzing this morning. So it's, uh, it's really interesting. Uh, I must say, we found also like uh, a very interesting uh, comments um, on um, which questions should be um, also uh, be treated. So that's, uh, that's, that's good. Um, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm turning here to see like, what about you here? You you you're here with us, so that's a a good, you know, it's direct way to tell us anything you would like to. Yes, please see. So how long we're gonna give you a microphone? Otherwise, you won't be on the audio tape, and that would be too bad. So the microphone is gonna come to you in a second. I just uh, have a look here beyond the limelight. It's wandering out. Oh, okay. 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 Very good. So uh, maybe let me tell you in the meanwhile that uh, we, we, we got a very nice input about like questions about how many screenings should we have, the amount of screenings, or what do we do for young audiences as a, a key question also. Or um, how do we welcome newcomers in markets? Or um, what is the future of film exploitation? Or protect independent cinema. So <laughs> we had a couple of uh, uh, ideas here already. So please, go on. Um, my name is Notka Green, politician from Berlin. And what I miss is the connection between the industry and politics. Because we've always been sort of left out, always closed shop, hard to get into EFM. Um, but we need that information. We need the discussion because a lot of we have to decide a lot of things about subsidies, about uh, how should we support cinema, should we support the industry, is filmmaking more important, what about streaming? So we need that information and we need, we need to be tutored. So I think we need a more close um, uh, communication form and I think probably your side should develop tools or something to uh, somehow reach us. Imply the, the, the politics side. I mean, this is something that, uh, as Pascal was saying, uh, the, the, the whole and big thing of uh, public funding is quite something, and it is something which is decided by the uh, politics. And um, it, it, it's interesting to say, because film is between art and also somehow technology and commerce and etc. So it means that there are different films, um, different, sorry, different fields. Uh, uh, of funding uh, coming together, so that's uh, something that we could also reflect, I guess, in the in this. Uh, thanks. Okay, well noted. Thank you. Anybody else here on site? Checking. Don't be shy. This is your moment to be on tape <laughs> and to say something. 
What I don't want to hear is in three months when we are done with the thing, I don't want to hear, but you should have been doing this. So it is now, <laughs> you know. And for those of you who are online and watching the recording, you still have the time. We will check the answers even if you watch it and it is early January. I will check your answers. So please, <laughs> you can still do the survey. Okay, last round here uh, from you. Oh, that's a think tank survey. Yes, okay, we have it again for those who, of you who still want to have it. Exactly. And um, making a, a last uh, a round. Any other input, question? Can I see back uh, my. Oh, no, we wait one second. Ah. In case you didn't have it, you I will give it to you again, no worries. Um, and we will uh, project it at the very end. So I just want to make sure uh, from uh, you as uh, specific partners in this project, any other input, uh, uh, questions, remarks that we can take into account to shape the final think tanks projects? Please go on. Or any comments like Martina or Adeline. Um, I would say, like, I mean, a lot of topics have been raised already also in your first presentation. Um, these are topics that we're all dealing with that are important for us. I think it would be good to maybe de define, like, an overall, what do we want to be the outcome of this? Because, like, we're not discussing the future of film markets to have, like, one future for all film markets. I think, but um, we're still, we're, we just want to draw inspiration from this. And I don't know how to phrase it, but I think it would be good to still have um, like an overall question. What do you, we want to achieve in the end? Mm. Yes, it's true, of course, that uh, it has to be a source of inspiration for the future. You're totally right. Um, on the other hand, it's not either the goal to install a new rule for which film markets may do what <laughs> and which film markets may not do what, uh, whatever that is, but uh, probably something like a corporate cooperative uh, thing. And I think it's, a, it's great to start a di dialogue, or actually a multilogue, because it is really like with different uh, uh, partners there. Yeah, but thank you. Um, if I may say so, um, as I said at the beginning, we are part of um, the same uh, system, ecosystem, and uh, maybe after three months, uh, this dialogue will not stop, by the way, because um, we need to talk all the time together to go to know where we go, uh, where we want to be in five years, all the fears that we have, all the, you know, that sh did we, how did it work for you? Should we go in this direction? And we already do it. Uh, on a daily, you know, we do it uh, on bilateral uh, discussions or, uh, but maybe we should uh, continue. I, I don't know. I mean, it's just uh, an idea, but um, um, systematically uh, meet on a yearly base or whatever, it's, it's important because we don't, as markets, we don't uh, have that. I think that uh, one thing that happened during the pandemic is that we, a lot of us got together and exchanged opinions and problems and practical tools of how to do the hybrid the, um, online and about funding as well, <laughs> a lot, because changes were made there too. Uh, but then, uh, you know, because it's going very, very fast and it's very fluid, like, uh, I, I think that the, the reason we're doing this think tank is to force ourselves to think, to stop and think all together. And then, of course, it will continue. Uh, but at least it's a start that we, we get our heads together, all of us, and not, you know, all, I'll have a Zoom with Martina and Inke, and then I have another Zoom. So it's, it's like more systemic. Uh, and uh, I think from then on, it will be easier to, to communicate. But mm -hmm. uh, definitely, all markets are diverse. We don't want to have one result. It's not, it's not the point. Mm. Uh, and everyone is uh, supporting or has a, a, a niche um, industry, uh, professional niche, let's mm -hmm. say, and audience. 
Absolutely. So. And I would not be surprised, actually, if at the end of the process we say, oh, actually, we need to split this. We need to have a talk with the bigger markets and whatever that is, and maybe we will have like the smaller market with different niche and etc. Maybe it's, it's going to split in different directions, or or maybe it will also, I don't know, like seed some idea of something which is common to every market. I don't know. The future will tell us. You will tell us. So I think we did a round, and I don't see anyone having questions or input anymore. So. I think it's time to close the session. It is um, 2 to 4, so uh, to uh, 5. Uh, yes, I'm lost in time right now. Can but I just add something? Please. Because we, we collaborate also with Locarno, and we have here the Thessaloniki Locarno Industry Academy. Uh, we have here our project manager, uh, Costadina Sovevaliotis. Just, just to say that it starts tomorrow. Uh, they are arriving today. We're going to give the survey to them. <laughs> and. Uh, Yes, <laughs> thank you, making sure they get it and they do it. Uh, and uh, maybe reaching out to uh, the alumni as well so that maybe we can incorporate them, uh, as you said, in the think tanks because it could be very useful to have the younger generation uh, part of it. We, we, we want the younger generation for sure. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for your participation and for this. Uh, it's a first step right before we really dig into the thing so thanks a lot for everything we will get back in touch for sure and um, we will be back with the recording anyway so stay tuned <laughs> and see you soon around in uh, one of the next markets coming up and uh, here of course continuing the festival in Thessaloniki so bye thank you thank you thank you bye bye, -bye. thank you And can we please have again the, uh, the um, uh, QR code uh, for those who could not manage to have it? Thank you so much to the tech. It went very well. Thank you very much to all of you as a team. Thanks. <laughs>